It's the Bush League Mud Show. It's the Bush League Mud Show. Let's go. Are you ready? Make some noise! All right, yo, yo. What's going on? It's Bush League Mud Show. Slade. PJ. Giving you a WWE Raw for March 7th, 2022. This is your review. Be sure to like and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and follow us on social media. Promise we'll follow back. Here we are, PJ. A month away from WrestleMania 38, and we're starting to, week by week as the show goes on, we're setting up a little bit more, a little bit mm-hmm. more. The picture's clearer and clearer in terms of what direction that we could be seeing this in terms of the WrestleMania matches. So far, there's seven matches that have been booked between both nights, and this was a continuous build up. Build up. Of course, people want to know. In terms of re- of a response from AJ Styles, I never expected to see AJ on this show. No, if he would have, then that beating yes. that Edge gave him mm-hmm. would have had absolutely Nothing. no yep. effect whatsoever. Yeah, uh, we got that. We got this triple threat tag team title match that was going to once and for all settle who was going to be the champ going to WrestleMania. We were also going to see this this Miz TV segment with him and Logan Paul as they get ready to get ready for the Mysterios. For WrestleMania 38, this is as they're I, back in Cleveland. That they're was back the in thing. Cleveland, so yep. you knew that Miz was going to be making an appearance along with Paul. They're both from yep. there. Um, there's a lot of Cleveland flavor on this show. Yes. We, we got Dolph Ziggler on this show. We got Dana Brooke on this show, mm-hmm. which I'll be honest, I didn't even realize she was from Cleveland until they announced that. it. Yep. They put some extra emphasis on yeah. it. <laughs> Might have been the only time I've really heard Dana Brooke get a yeah. natural, organic pop yes exactly and then the match then the bell rang um here we go so this this thing starts off we opened up with um kevin owens seth rollins they come out they're talking about their quest to earn their spot at wrestlemania 38 on the card that was of course alpha academy they come out they interrupt and then rk bro joins them as we get ready to kick this triple threat tag team championship match off this kicked off raw yeah and this went on for a long time yeah we went through two commercial breaks on this thing i was surprised that they kicked off it but obviously we would find out why in the end it would set up the story yeah now this was a three-way tag team bout that was unlike Most that you usually see, there's usually the two men that are legal at once. This was a match that saw one member from each team in the ring at the same time. It was like triple threat tag team. So it was a boom, boom, boom all throughout here. And um, we end up getting Rollins and and Owens, which they, I mean, I think it's safe to say that of anyone in this match, they're probably the biggest heels, even more than Alpha Academy in this match. So um, uh, I guess a lot of people also figure that they would be heavy favorites. I never saw them as being heavy favorites because I'm like, well, we got to, we got to get yes. these guys to Mania. They don't mm-hmm. if they're not winning these belts anytime soon then they don't need to be going into Mania as a tag no. team. Let Owens do what we end up figuring out once for all what yes. they, the plans are yep. for that. Rollins is still in the dark, but they were a nice addition to the match. Um Every time they hit a big spot or they scored a near, near fall, the, the the fans erupted. So I, I think yeah, the fans was, wanted, to, they see wanted them to see them win yeah. the, the, the belts. Yeah. Uh, now, Orton and RK, bro, they were just as over with the audience, yes. of course. And um, after and, this. And I know we pick on tag team wrestling mm-hmm. in the WWF, but uh, this was something the crowd want. All three teams were getting. A reaction, and that's finally what you wanted with yeah. with their tag team division. The match, I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah, all all three teams they looked good. Rollins and Owens, they might have looked the best of everyone. They probably got the most offense in of, of anyone. Yeah. Um, so, and, and they honestly, as a tag team, even though they haven't been together that long, they actually complement each other very mm-hmm. well. And I and I think a lot of that too is just knowing each other for a very yeah. long time, going all the way back to that company that Tony Khan now owns. <laughs> Um, but they've, they've got some incredible chemistry as partners. Anyways, uh, this whole thing, it was fun from start to finish. Your winners and new tag team champs going in the mania. That is RK bro riddle and Orton winning. And, um, it was, a it was a good thing for the crowd. The crowd was excited. Afterwards, Kevin Patrick, he's in the ring and he's talking to the new champs 
RK Bro and Randy Orton. I haven't cut I haven't seen Randy Orton cut such a baby face promo in a long time. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't yeah. even really a baby face promo. You he was just talking about how much fun that he's been having and he considers Matt Riddle is a friend now, and, and he's <laughs> he's been doing it now for over 20 years, and mm-hmm. he hasn't had that this much fun in a very long time, if ever, and they're going to WrestleMania, so it was a very joyous moment, and uh, they're hugging one another, the crowd's mm-hmm. all into it, so... Yeah. And and I didn't get an inkling whatsoever if this team is breaking up anytime soon. I hope <laughs> not. I, I'm here for the ride. Can we make it till next Mania before the breakup? I... It's a long ways out, especially with this company, but it would be a hell of a story if they can make it to then to, you know. Of the go, odd couple tag teams. Yes. To, and it doesn't to, even to, have to even be a blow off where it no. results in a match. I don't ever recall Goldust and Booker T having a match exactly. and broke it up. I think they yeah. just. If they go their, their separate t- ways or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure everyone will wait for Randy to hit that RKO out of nowhere and then. You yeah. know, set it off, but which there was an RKO uh, that was hitting this match that pretty much, <laughs> dude. I'm gonna tell you, if anything with yeah. this tag team feud that's been going on for the last four to six weeks, Chad Gable's been taking some big time bumps. Yes, yes. Of anyone in this in this and angle a tonight, tonight yeah. he does a a, a backward somersault yeah. off the top, in which Orton caught him with an RKO <laughs> on the way down. And this guy's been taking stunners. He's been taking curb stops. Mm-hmm. He's been taking RKOs. Yes. This dude's taking everything. He is the fall guy. He is. In term- well, we can't put those moves on Otis. No, he can't. So Gable's been Gable, the bump yeah, guy. Gable's been taking all the hard bumps. And uh, again, tonight, he took them all. Uh, now, overall, with this match, new champs, I guess now it's just a matter of who will be their challengers for WrestleMania, and I think I have a pretty good idea because they just got beat clean by this team last week mm-hmm. leading up to this triple threat match, and and they've kind of eh, been giving more of a heelish type vibe in their promos lately, Well, uh, yeah. and, and that being the Street Profits, and I think you could play into that whole thing with Orton being hurt in that yes. match last week, which yeah. it turned out it was nothing serious. Mm-hmm. It didn't, didn't look that way when you were watching the match live, but... You know, Street Profits, I guess they, they've got something to, to claim. that They beat the new champs clean in the middle yep. of the ring. So maybe that's your tag team match. We know it won't be Rollins and Owens. Nope. And uh, and I don't think it'll be a straight-up tag team match. I think Alpha Academy gets their rematch gets in there. as well. Yeah. yeah, it could be a three-way at Mania. We'll see. Um, On to the next segment. 24-7 mess, baby. <laughs> Dana Brooke versus Tamina. Now, mind you, the tag team thing went damn near 45, 50 minutes. Mm-hmm. So then we had this come on to break it up a little bit. It did. Uh, before Dana Brooke and Tamina, before they met for the match, they uh, each had a moment with their respective backstage bows, if you will. Uh, both women got kisses for good luck, and uh, Tamina was a little bit more aggressive with hers when it came to Tazawa <laughs> and... Uh, uh, after a Laying short exchange, Brooke was able to get the pin uh, when she reversed a Boston Crab into a seated pinning combination. Wasn't really much of a match no. at all. This thing went by pretty fast. Tozawa got on the mic, said that uh, the real winner was in the ring. He was using that to uh, kiss a little ass, get another <laughs> kiss, and Tamina just walked off from him. So there you go. Again, just another... <sighs> I understand they're trying to cool things down, get ready for the next segment after the big tag match, but, again, this is just – Vince really loves this 24-7 shit. That's all I can say. It amuses him. This no is one his. else does, but, yeah. Um, We get a tag team match that has NXT implications for Roadblock tomorrow night. Three out of the four competitors in this tag match are going to be in it. Um, Well, let's just say – Four. Yeah. I mean, it's a triple threat. You're going to see Rude interfere somehow. Actually, before we get into that match, yeah. let's talk about what happened before, and that was our Miz welcoming back to the hometown of Cleveland along with Logan Paul, who's also from there. And um, it was a, a mixed response for Miz. He got his typical Miz booze, but everyone knows he's from there, so he also yeah. got... Uh, a nice little welcome in there, too, that was mixed in there. Now, this was advertised as a 
segment where Jerry Lawler was also going to be a part of this. Jerry Lawler eventually joins them in the ring after The Miz tells his spiel with Paul about Dominic riding the coattails of his legendary father, Rey Mysterio. So Lawler joins the guys in the ring. Miz then starts trashing Cleveland. Lawler feels that maybe they could do the match in Cleveland, have the WrestleMania match there, and that's where everything nice that the Miz had in terms of praising his hometown. Boy, did that go down the toilet real quick. He said that winners... From the Cleveland area, they end up leaving, and Cleveland isn't exactly a WrestleMania-type town. He's not wrong. He goes that the pyro alone, they they would not be able to handle the WrestleMania pyro. They can't even take the the lake would be set on fire. Yes, so he starts trashing, they get their heat, they walk off. I thought that this was a big old waste of time. To have Jerry Lawler a part of this. You didn't need yeah. Lawler to be a part of this. They brought him down just to set up mm-hmm. the heat turn. Well, another Cleveland guy. Lawler, the big-time Browns fan, is from Cleveland. And, you know, he got to name off the local towns and I'm show his Browns pride off again. But, yeah, for the only about the – Two minutes that he was basically on camera for, it was a waste of the king. I mean, he got to use him in a better better place than this. And it was strange, and especially with no Mysterios coming down for a confrontation or anything like yeah. that. It didn't do much. After that, though, we ended up getting our tag team match that we were just about to get into. Dolph Ziggler and Robert Root, the Dirty Dogs, taking on the team of Braun Breaker and Tommaso Ciampa, who will be... Uh, Ziggler, Breaker, and Champa. they're going to be in the triple threat match for the NXT 2.0 title at Roadblock tomorrow night. So this was a raw debut for Braun Breaker. And, you know, maybe I'm overreacting on this, but I just felt that, again, it's like we don't have up-and-coming talent to feel special about. And I'm like, as long as NXT is going to be on national television, it's really hard to – make people feel that special because you can just tune in the next night and see them on the lesser promoted show. And I said with Braun Breaker for me, you know, I didn't need to see Braun Breaker officially on Raw until it was really time for him to be on Raw. Just to have him in here to just be in a tag match. I guess you, I get it. You want to push the NXT match for tomorrow, get some eyeballs, get people teased. So hopefully that they can maybe tune in tomorrow. I just, you know, we put together before this match starts a big video package, an NXT video package mm-hmm. to introduce Braun Breaker, which, again, they're, he's on the same network. They're just a night apart. And I just, again, it's like, you know, you think about the future wave of WWE talent and why the new ones that they do bring up, why they don't feel as special. Well, because you've already seen him. I think he's coming up soon. Very soon. Very soon. How they soon? Need, they Night need. after Mania? That'd be way, way, way too soon, right? Now, did you notice so. that they also popped up that graphic right before this match started of Gable Stevenson winning Correct. that NCAA? Yes. So, I mean, there's either they leave him down there to feud with Stevenson and give Stevenson the 2.0 belt or... They're just seeing this guy off the charts, which he is. He's getting a response. You can't keep him down there forever. And that was their big thing is the big stars, young stars, up-and-coming talent, and you're sitting here with the WrestleMania card. You don't – is Austin Aries the uh, – or not Austin Aries. Austin, Austin, Theory. Austin Theory is the youngest guy on that card, right? The youngest, and he's – I mean, he's good. He's got everything there, but he's not that star level they want. I'm guessing with Breaker, I would not be surprised if he's up there in the next two months. Wow. I wouldn't. I mean, look how he's done, though. He's done fantastic. Yeah. Why keep him down there if he's he's not he's – he's the big fish, small pond. Yeah. Bring him up. Put him on the show. You know, we're going to have this situation where we're not going to have two belts they're fighting for anyways after Mania. There's going to be one. So – you may as well bring him up and see what the hell you have. Overall, the tag team match, it was I thought it was pretty solid. Thought it was it was good. It was designed mm-hmm. to do what it was supposed to do. 
And uh, Champa and Breaker, they were able to get a victory. They scored the victory, and Ziggler got on the mic to uh, remind them that they're not going to be teammates tomorrow. They're yep. going to be enemies, and, mm-hmm. and Ziggler cut a nice little sore loser promo before walking out with the mic <laughs> drop and all that. So there you go. That was your tag team match. Get you ready for NXT 2.0 Roadblock tomorrow. Um, next, we ended up getting... In a squash match, Omos facing Apollo Cruz. Boy, oh, oh the mighty have the fallen. Again. Boy, the mighty fallen. Wasn't when we just in Tampa? This guy went into to Mania, Mania last year as the Intercontinental Champ yeah. and scored the Win. victory the over Mania Big match. E. Yeah, who After ended up losing becoming like five in a row going in, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so we got this match. And Omas seemed to be distracted by Commander Aziz before this thing even got underway. Well, yeah, because they were rivals at Raw Underground. Oh, that's right. That didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, that never happened, sir. <laughs> uh, Cruz, he was able to get in more offense than most people who face Omas. Uh, he was still defeated a couple of minutes. Squash matches. Fine at first, but at this point, I think with Omos, we, we need to start having more competitive bouts. We're, we're starting to let him talk a little more. They're shooting his interviews. They're shooting them yeah. different now. Yeah. The interviewer is not in a shot with him. No, I saw that they shot it face up, face down up. low, looking at yes. him to make him appear to be the giant. And so uh, that's where we are now. I, I think for longevity for Omos, I think now we need to – slowly but surely start having a few more competitive bouts with him. Yeah, this is really made this of. seems like this is okay, take two now that we have AJ off of him. Let's see what he can do on his own. And uh, this is this is the do or die part, I think, because I I don't know if he's still in the good graces or not. I think they're gonna try this, but I I don't know for how much longer because again in the in the in ring work, it's still a little rusty down. For him, it's he's still moving. I understand he's a big guy, but he is still moving at a slow glacial pace yeah. sometimes in there. Yeah. Um. After this, we ended up getting the segment uh, with Edge coming out and explaining why he attacked AJ Styles so viciously last week to end the show. And I'm going to tell you, I love this. Mm-hmm. Um. The lights were out. We just got yeah. a blue little blue spotlight, light. and that yeah. made you think for a hot minute maybe it was going to be AJ because those are his colors. Yep. And we get the edge music that hits off, and then it, it cuts off it. pretty. Then they yep. killed it, and it's yep. just silence, and he comes out. He's got on a suit, and in pure silence with all you hearing, it's just the live crowd. He walks into the ring very methodically, slow and methodically, Grabs the mic and he talks about why he did what he did last week. Well, first off, he trolled the crowd by saying, "You think you know me?" So yeah. that 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 yes. was that was pretty funny. Um, and then he talked about how he did it for AJ. He needed to bring the bulldog. He needed to bring out the AJ that wasn't the tag team bitch of Omos the last year. Mm-hmm. He he wanted that guy, and he feels that he's helped him. And in the process. He has found a part of himself that he didn't even know existed, and he's loving it too. So this is establishing absolutely who the baby face and who the heel yes. is once and for all, and that's where we are going going into this. So, And Beth Phoenix hit Twitter after this, and she was very concerned. <laughs> For her husband. Yes. I, you know, I can appreciate her <laughs> yeah, for doing I know, that. It was funny. I can appreciate her for doing that. Yes. Rather than at the time when he was the big time over baby face yes. in AEW, Cody Rhodes, his wife <laughs> is in the Nightmare Collective yes. with Kong and yes. Luther, yes. and they're doing all this this evil yeah. James Vandenberg <laughs> shit. I, yes. I, I, I I didn't I didn't get times. that. Or or when Becky was still babyface, you had Seth yes. rolling around here as the yep. cackling. Heel. Mm-hmm. I even everybody knows they've yes. had a baby. Yes, like does exactly. he cackle in front of his baby at night? That's probably where he got it from. <laughs> Kids having sleep deprivation and he's crying like that or something like that. So that's probably where he got it from. It's annoying. It can be. Did Speaking your of experience? Kid, did here. your kids cackle like Sometimes, that? Sometimes, yes. <laughs> I can see where he got it from. Um, 
After that, we got a tag match of Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. Yes, Rhea Ripley. We we, shit we, we took her away here. from Nikki Ash. Yes. I'm like, okay, finally, we can get Ripley away, get her back as a singles. Get, no, we just get, give her a new tag team partner. So Liv Morgan. They faced off of the team of uh, the current tag champs of Carmella and Queen Zelina, which becoming Queen of the Ring has done absolutely nothing for Zelina since they paired her with Carmella. Because the whole spotlight and the shine has now been on Carmella for the last month or so. Yeah. And then you add in the fact that they now want to acknowledge on camera once and for all that her and Corey Graves are together because we need to push this YouTube, YouTube show. Yep. It really just puts Queen Zelina out there. Yeah. It really smothers her in this. Yes. It really does. Yeah. Um, but anyways... We got a non-title match with implications that if uh, if Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, if they won, then they they would end up earning a shot at the women's tag team titles. The belt, I mean, this bout was trash. This was really the highlight of this was Zelina being stuck in the ring by herself as Carmella was distracted outside the ring, flirting with Corey Graves. Uh, this allowed Morgan and Rhea Ripley, knowing that everything that was on the line to take advantage of this, and Rhea ended up defeating Zelina with the Riptide and earning herself and Morgan a spot in the tag team title bout at <laughs> WrestleMania 38. We have Sasha Banks and now Rhea and Ripley involved in a tag team bout at Mania. When you just could have did, honestly, you just could have did an angle of Sasha Banks and Rhea Ripley. You could have. And just could've had a done. match. Yep. Didn't have to be for a belt. Didn't have to be. Crowd would have been all about it. Yep. Sasha's a natural heel, anyways, because mm-hmm. you don't need to flip Rhea anytime soon. No, nope. we we just we we, we just, just can't, can't help can't ourselves, can we? No, nope. we can't. Yeah, <sighs> I know it's frustrating because the women can have good storytelling too without a title. That's I think that's what they're still afraid of. They they can't have one on one matches without a title. It seems like that's what they're afraid of on the big shows, mm. and it's yeah. Um, in terms of in the ring, in terms of a match, the main event of the night saw Finn Balor facing Austin Theory, uh, the new United States champion. He was not defending the title, though. Pride was still on the line because Austin Theory's debut came against Finn Balor. He yeah, defeated right. Finn clean. Yeah. So, incredible athletes. I mean, it's so hard to even – you always – you forget that Finn Balor's in his 40s now. Yeah. Keeps himself in phenomenal shape. Yeah. I mean, and still uh, looks younger than this. Still, too. still yeah. looks great. Still not yeah. good enough to get a push from the old man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyways, these guys, they I thought they had a pretty solid match, pretty fast pace, innovative offense by both guys, and they ended up hitting some of their more popular moves. And um, this ended up being, I, I think, coming out of Mania, I feel like these two were touching each other too soon because I thought this could be a feud that you could have coming out of Mania, maybe giving Theory that opportunity of maybe taking that United States title with the storyline, hey, I've already beaten you. yeah, And I I just, you know, because Priest needs to move on and get to the next word we want to send him. Uh, But anyways, I thought it was a pretty solid match. At one point, we see Balor, who's getting ready to go up top and looks like he's getting ready to try to finish Theory off with the Coupe de Gras. But I love how they shot this because you never saw Damian Priest one bit during this match. No. And he's on the ropes, and all of a sudden, this hand just comes out of nowhere and snatches. I thought it was Theory's hand for a moment. I'm like, damn, did he get up fast? No, they pan over, and there it is. It's Damian Priest, and he's grabbed... Finn Balor by the throat, and he throws him off the top rope. That it allows a disqualification. I love that because Balor has just won that belt. Mm-hmm. You can continue that story with him, Priest, and it saves Theory going into his match with McAfee at, yeah. at Mania. So um, Theory, after Priest did some damage to Balor, Theory ended up picking up some of the bones, hit Balor with his finisher, and got the selfie in. So double whammy for... Finn Balor. I guess it did what everyone needed to do here. It got, you know, Priest and Balor, more of that story. Theory was in a high-profile match, I guess, for a title. Comes out, gets some more heat for his Mania match against McAfee, and there we go. 
Um, I we do want to throw out there that before this match started, um, based on the news that had broke earlier during uh, Monday morning, earlier in the day, WWE on the show confirmed that Vader is going to be going into the Hall of Fame this year. It's about time. Yeah. Oh, it's time. It's time. It's Come Vader right. time. Yes. <laughs> so um, that was the other thing that I came out. I was surprised of this. that they. I, I thought. Taker was going to be the lone inductee. I thought they were just going to leave it as is, but it makes sense to have Vader in with him. I know Taker worked with him and, you know, whatnot, so I don't know if they passed any of this by Taker or not, but I'm sure he's all for it. Yeah. Um, To end this show, we ended up getting Kevin Owens coming out one last time, came out with about 10 minutes left in the show. He got in the ring, then we went to a break, came back, and he was on the mic, and he was trying to figure out, well, hey, since he and Rollins, because these two were sopping all throughout the night since they didn't come away with the tag team titles, well, what are my plans for Mania? So Kevin Owens has decided that he wants to do a KO show at Mania, <laughs> yep. and being that he's got to do it in a dump like Texas, he was trying to figure out possibilities of certain people to be potential guests. And the first one that he called off was John Bradshaw <laughs> Layfield, JBL. And he said that the that the horns on his limo <laughs> would make a better guest. Yes. So that's out of that that's out. Yeah. Uh the other person was Booker T. <laughs> and he said, Well, Booker T, you now all about being from Texas. And he just called him out last week for being a liar. He called KO a liar. So then yes, so he went at him. He said, you know, for you, now all of a sudden you want to be all about Texas when for years you paraded around with your brother yeah. called Harlem <laughs> Heat. <laughs> so, And then you became King Booker. You start speaking with a really <laughs> horrible British <laughs> accent. Yeah. So you're out. Yes. That um, was good. And then he brought up the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Yes, he did. And he buttered it up and everything. But he said, you know, you're a proud Texan, but just like you're a proud Texan, I'm a proud Canadian. Canadian yep. And I respect <laughs> for Brett the Hitman. <laughs> That's a no Yo, for you, that too. That was awesome. Yeah. So, uh, and he really, you know, even though everyone knew yep. for the last couple of weeks what was coming, Kevin Owens, no one can ever dispute how well he is in terms of storytelling and getting on the mic yes. and just, you know. So, uh, but anyways, that's when he finally got to the thing. He challenged Stone Cold Steve Austin to appear on the KO show. He wants nothing more than to be able to stun him, the stun heard around the world. The Stone Cold stunner heard around the world. He talked about Austin. Will he actually show up? Is he going to come out in a walker? This guy, even during his prime of his run, had knee braces yes. on and all. Yeah. So so he's getting into all of that. Yes. And he's like, I don't know if he'll have the guts to show up. I don't think he will. Now, of course, that that part was the bullshit yeah. about it. You know, mm-hmm. Stone Cold Steve Austin's a guy that will not. But um, we ended the show with a graphic of – Austin on the KO show with a question mark. And they hit so, the damn music. And they hit the I'm music like, no, during the graphic. That was the worst that? thing. They that was the worst. Yeah. 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 They wasted the big pop. Save the glass shattering yes, for Mania. When he's there. When he's yes. actually there. Absolutely. Well, does he show, you think he shows up before Mania here to accept this, whatever the hell we're going to call it? Or does this turn into a match since he's threatening them all this shit? That's where I'm wondering because to just to do an interview segment, uh, I no, we know action's gonna happen, something's gonna happen. Does this turn into the match that we might be thinking about? You know, I feel that this could be something where it's a la John Cena several years ago at Mania, okay, where we're just waiting and waiting and waiting. We don't hear from Austin at all until the night of Mania during the KO show. He's calling them out. Yeah, I guess if that's what they're going to do, but I mean, does he come out in the beer truck? He's got to come out in something. <laughs> I mean, it's Austin. He's got to come out. In ATV the or four wheeler. Well, or is a- this what they want though? Because if people know, if they think Stone Cold's going to be on Raw, they're going to get numbers. That, that those numbers are going to go up. Can they? You think USA at this point's expecting for that's, for Austin see, that's to at least thing. get if one? You're promising in. him. Hell, Fox is probably like, uh, we want in on this shit. <laughs> I mean, you just imagine one of the biggest stars, and like Owen said, we haven't seen this guy in like 19 years. I mean, he said it right in the promo. They were, Which makes you think it would be a match. Th- exactly. That was when I his mean, last match was. 
that's where I'm going, and I'm wondering if it will be a match, and will this be, I don't even want to put it on that level, but would, would this be like a Rock Hogan thing? It's not, I mean, those were two icons, I get it, but I mean, with Austin back in the damn ring, people aren't going to shut up. They're going to be. That crowd in Texas, 100,000 people, it, that's going to be fucking roaring. If he's in the in a match, I that's why I'm like I don't know if we can do an interview segment with this. That's why I think it, it's got to be a match, especially if Owens continues to needle at him and and all that shit, saying, "Oh, I'm gonna beat him up." It's like, well, he ain't gonna show up to an interview show to get his ass kicked. <laughs> this is Stone Cold, damn it. Yeah, we will see. We will see. Um, you know they've let it out now, so it's all about the follow up. And yeah. and we got four weeks till Mania, so they still have. I mean. He, it does he make an appearance before Mania on I think he has TV? to. I think he has to. The way they they want more interest in this damn thing. I mean, what's Raw getting? Raw's still not in the twos, are they? Are they just getting back into the twos? Barely. The last I time I checked, it was still yeah. one. Now I know with football season and done with, but then, yeah. I mean, March Madness usually is on the weekend, so they ain't gonna run into too much of that, but. You need more than fucking twos if you have a mania like this coming up to yeah. get drum up more interest. If he comes on live TV, if he shows up on Raw, it's no longer a interview segment. It's no longer no. a KO show. Yeah. It's no longer yeah, a... Yeah, we're having a match. Especially when Owens has already let it be known what he plans to do on the KO show too often. Exactly. That, and that's my point with that. It's just like, okay, this has got to be... Something more than the fucking interview show. Yeah. Because wasn't Owens in the League of Nations shit when this was in t- Texas? Before? I was trying to remember. Was it him, Barrett, um, uh, Andrade, or not Andrade, but uh, Del Rio, and also was Cesaro in that League of Nations shit? Or no, Rusev. Yes, it was Rusev. It wasn't was, Owens. Owens was not part of that crowd. Owens That's was right. not a part of that. Okay. See, I was trying to remember. I'm like, well, he's Canadian. He's international. I can't remember what the hell Owens is. What was Owens and Zayn going at it for the final time on that? Media? Well, what was alleged to have been yes, the final time. And then we saw him one. again. That's right. And then again. Yes. And then again. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, overall, I thought the show was was a solid B, considering once you, you, know, you really have to think about the losses that they have currently. Um, there's we no didn't even Lesner. talk about Becky, too. She was hurt the night before. Yeah. Um, she was laying in the hospital <laughs> bed and said, last week Bianca you know, whipped me and I couldn't show up. And then last night in Allentown, yeah. she ripped out or she hurt my vocal cords and I can't even talk. So I, apparently, you know, that, that was that was on the show, too. So which is a good thing, though. You didn't I we could have used, you know, that awful week or two. That'll be just fine. Yeah. But she was missing as well. Notable in action tonight. Yeah. Uh, overall, I thought it was a solid B on the show. You know, there was no Becky. Lashley's hurt. Yep. There's no Lesnar on this show because Lesnar, now his services will be predominantly on SmackDown heading into Mania. Mm-hmm. Um, And, you know, it, it, it we're, we're still some weeks away. And they still got some time to figure this thing out. I didn't feel like that there was anything that was being hot shot at on this show. I think they're just yeah. taking their time, yeah. and I, and that's all you can really ask for during Mania season, the several weeks leading up to it. So, um, overall, what'd you think of the show? I'll give them a B plus for this because the tag team match turned out a hell of a lot better than I thought it was. I mean, they let them go for a while too, but they kept you entertained in it, and and things made sense and. It, the crowd was into it. The crowd was into every damn thing in that match. It was pretty cool to see that, yes, the crowd still matters a little bit to maybe some some of the roster. I don't know, but yeah. it was great to see that. And the storylines are involving, yeah. and, of course, where we're getting to with the Austin Owens thing. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of the show. We love to read your comments and respond back and, and jibber jabber that way as well. And be sure to like and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And also follow us on social media at Bush League MS Pod from Slade. PJ. We're the Bush League Munch Show. We'll be back at you Wednesday night as we're going to be giving you an AEW Dynamite review. Their first Dynamite coming off of the. 
Revolution pay-per-view. Yes, and we'll see if there's any Ring of Honor news to be updated on. <laughs> or not. Just had to get that one off, didn't you? Cheeseburger <laughs> is all elite. <laughs> I'm waiting for it. Later. <laughs>